Welcome to the presentation. In this, we cover the properties of the task environment, which is the continuation of the agent task environment. As per Russell and Norvig, an environment can have various features from the point of view of an agent. Fully observable versus partially observable. Static versus dynamic. Discrete versus continuous. Deterministic versus stochastic. Single agent versus multi agent. Episodic versus sequential. Known versus unknown. Accessible versus inaccessible. If agents' sensors give it access to the complete state of the environment at each point in time, then we say that the task environment is fully observable. A task environment is effectively fully observable if the sensors detect all aspects that are relevant to the choice of action. Relevance depends on the performance measure. Fully observable environments are convenient because the agent need not maintain any internal state to keep track of the world. An environment might be partially observable because of noisy and inaccurate sensors missing from the sensor data. Example, a vacuum agent with only a local dirt sensor cannot tell whether there is dirt in other squares. In the case of a taxi driver it's partially observable because he cannot know the whole situation, like the traffic etc. If an agent's current state and selected action can completely determine the next state of the environment, then such an environment is called a deterministic environment. A stochastic environment is random in nature and cannot be determined completely by an agent. In a deterministic, fully observable environment, an agent does not need to worry about uncertainty. For example for a crossword puzzle or a water jug problem, it is deterministic because the result is all action is defined with the environment. But for a taxi driver it is stochastic, we cannot say what happens on the way. In an episodic environment, there is a series of one-shot actions, and only the current percept is required for the action. Sequential environments require the memory of past actions to determine the next best action. As an example. An artificial intelligence system that looks at radiology images to determine if there is a sickness is an example of an episodic environment. One image has nothing to do with the next. Crossword puzzle or taxi driver is sequential, one action leads to another action. If the environment can change itself while an agent is deliberating then such an environment is called a dynamic environment, else, it is called a static environment. Static environments are easy to deal with because an agent does not need to continue looking at the world while deciding for an action. However, for dynamic environment, agents need to keep looking at the world at each action. Taxi driving is an example of a dynamic environment whereas crossword puzzles are an example of a static environment. The semi-dynamic environment is not changed over time comma but the agent's performance score does. If there are a limited number of distinct, clearly defined, states of the environment, the environment is discrete. Otherwise, it is continuous. A chess game comes under a discrete environment as there is a finite number of moves that can be performed. A self-driving car is an example of a continuous environment. If only one agent is involved in an environment, and operating by itself then such an environment is called a single agent environment. However, if multiple agents are operating in an environment, then such an environment is called a multi-agent environment. The agent design problems in the multi-agent environment are different from the single agent environment. Playing a crossword puzzle is an example of a single agent. Chess playing is an example of two agents. Or a competitive multi-agent environment. An automated taxi driver is an example of a cooperative multi-agent environment. Known and unknown are not actually a feature of an environment, but it is an agent's state of knowledge to perform an action. In a known environment, the results for all actions are known to the agent. While in an unknown environment, the agent needs to learn how it works in order to perform an action. It is quite possible that a known environment to be partially observable and an unknown environment to be fully observable. Solitaire card games are an example of a known environment. A new online game is an example of an unknown environment. If an agent can obtain complete and accurate information about the state's environment, then such an environment is called an accessible environment, else, it is called inaccessible. 
An empty room whose state can be defined by its temperature is an example of an accessible environment. Information about an event on Earth is an example of an inaccessible environment. Here are some examples of task environments and their properties. Thank you, and have a nice day.